the NRA beat him in Arkansas. The NRA and Ralph Nader right, stand right behind the Supreme Court and their ability to claim that they put George Bush in the White House. The NRA had enough votes in, in New Hampshire, in Arkansas, maybe in Tennessee, and in Missouri. Right to beat us and they nearly whipped us two or three other places you got to give it to them they've done a good job they they probably had more to do with anyone else than the fact we didn't win the house this time and they hurt al gore you know even after having his clock clean in the 94 elections and even after what i believe were their lies cost al gore the white house i still believe president clinton didn't get it it wasn't just the nra that cost him those elections because for every gun owner who voted against the Clinton-Gore gun bans, a lot more Americans voted against the dishonesty and the injustice of demanding more gun laws in this country against honest people while refusing by policy to enforce the laws against criminals. I mean, history proves it. When politicians and the press tell lies to the American people, the American people turn on them with a vengeance. And when the lies become laws, those laws meet the same demise as the politicians who push them. That's what happened to President Clinton's so-called assault weapons ban. His Justice Department studied the law, and even they concluded it was a farce. Why? Because the banned guns were never involved in more than a fraction of crime in this country. So after 10 years, Congress allowed the ban to expire, but not before the media went out there one last time to try to lie it all back into law. Here's CNN. In our demonstration that we're going to show you right now, the uh, uh, Detective uh, Worth, Chris Worth, is going to shoot that AK-47, right, that you that, just gave us? That's right. It's an old Chinese AK-47 that has been banned. And that is one of the banned that's, weapons, that's, the 19 currently banned the weapons. Weapons. And you can see the destructive force. It's got a 30 uh, rounds in its magazine, um, and it will be firing it now. Okay. Now that was semi-automatic. That's semi. Switch your automatic. Now this is automatic. Wow, I had obliterated those blocks. Those blocks Absolutely are gone. Obliterated it. You know, if anything got obliterated by CNN, it was their own credibility as a legitimate source of news that day. The next day, I happened to be on CNN, and I happened to be in the studio, so I decided to call them out on it. Here's a clip. Your bureau chief, John Zarella deliberately faked the story yesterday intending to show that the performance characteristics of banned firearms on the list are somehow different from the performance characteristics of firearms not on the banned list. He was, a, he was implying that these were uh, machine guns, they're fully automatic guns. That's not true. Mr. LaPierre, I, I have to stop you there. No one fakes stories at, he, at CNN, and John Zarella definitely did not fake a story at CNN. Here. You're very off base. I'm going to let you say your opinion, and let's right, have well, a conversation, but don't accuse uh, our reporter of faking well, any no, story, sir. Let me say it again in front of the whole country. Your reporter faked that story yesterday. It deliberately misread right, the gonna, viewer. There's no, way, there's no way it could be true, and I we're, challenge we're, CNN we're, to defend it. The dishonesty of that story was indefensible. The only difference was that this time, for once, we got to set the record straight because we happen to be sitting in the studio. It's like catching a bank robber when the die explodes all over him. And we got a chance to force him to tell the truth. Here's CNN the following Monday with a correction. On this program on Thursday of last week, we aired a live demonstration CNN set up with law enforcement officials of a banned semi-automatic rifle and its legal counterpart. We reviewed that demonstration and one on another CNN program and decided that a more detailed report would better explain this complex issue. This is a semi-automatic firearm. It fires one bullet for each trigger pull. Gary No, a retired 30-year police officer and assistant chief in Oakland Park, Florida. Let's examine the banned weapon explained the difference between a banned AR-15 and its legal clone. Flash suppressor, bayonet lug, high-capacity magazine over 10 rounds, pistol grip, and a telescoping rear stock. And the legal weapon 
doesn't have those features, correct? Doesn't have any of those features. And without those features, experts say the guns are identical. But it's exactly the same gun. And the same firepower. Same firepower, same bullet. Uh, you have to squeeze the trigger once to make a bullet go down the barrel. In fact, if you fire the same caliber and type bullets from the two guns, you get the same impact. You know, you'd think the media would learn from their mistakes, but instead of attacking the real problems, they, they're still trying to divert our attention by pushing the same old dishonest solutions. Here's Governor Ed Rendell of Pennsylvania. We went at it on uh, Face the Nation, and I used the words of his own There's police. absolutely no reason under the sun, no rational reason, that we should allow people to legally possess these type of semi-automatic assault weapons. Do you believe the assault weapons ban should be reinstated? Absolutely. You know, the governor sits up there in Philadelphia. Let me tell you the reality of the crime problem in this country. The former U.S. attorney said there's simply no risk of a felon in Philadelphia putting a gun in his pocket and walking out in the street. The former, the head of the FOP up there said the problem in Philadelphia is the revolving door criminal justice system lets the most prolific and violent criminals back on the street again and again. The chief of detectives of the Philadelphia Police Department has recently said there's no reason to talk about gun control. They don't enforce any of the gun laws they already have. He talks about no consequences. The consequences of not enforcing the law, again, is innocent people get hurt. And not just in Philadelphia, but in cities all across this country. In New York, only three of a thousand misdemeanors ever reach the court. One in ten felony arrests ever goes to trial. Chicago's police chief just recently said 60 percent of the weapons charges get kicked out of the courts. Police Chief Lanier of Washington, D.C. said violent offenders and victims all look the same with at least six prior arrests. And in Newark, New Jersey's police chief said victims typically have 10 to 23 arrests. Victims. In St. Louis, victims and suspects typically have 20 to 30 felony arrests and eight convictions. When the only answer to all that politicians offer is more gun control, that's completely dishonest. And the media kind of ignore that dishonesty. And again, I don't think it's just cynical. It's sinister. That's what's happening in New York State right now. I mean, in Albany, New York, it's turned into an urban battlefield, not because of a lack of laws. They already have some of the strictest gun laws in the nation. Yet instead, they haven't worked. And what do you have? Legislators pushing more gun control laws. Two months ago, thousands of people converged on the Capitol in New York State. I was there. I called it the belly of the beast. And I tried to tell them the truth. The truth is what the politicians won't admit and the media won't report is New York State's being ripped apart by violent felons. New York State's imprisonment rate, 28 percent lower than the national average. Its parole rate is way above the national average. According to the Department of Justice, New York's reduced its prison population by more than any other state. In fact, New York State has paroled more prisoner, prison inmates back to the, back to the streets, 12,000 than any other state except California. And I challenged them to put Project Exile in place. I said we'd fund the billboards. Every time you see a felon with a gun, drug dealer with a gun, prosecute, no, wouldn't do it. Albany newspaper, they didn't even report any of what I said. They simply said LaPierre addresses sportsman's rally. I mean, it's unbelievable. You know, when the authorities can't and won't protect you, they've got no business denying you the authority to protect yourself. It's not right. It's not just. It happened down in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. If you want to see injustice on a catastrophic scale, look at what they did to those poor folks in New Orleans when there was no police protection and that hurricane hit. Watch this clip real quick. <laughs> 